I can't say enough good things about the experience of a young person having a chance to do a live theater performance. So how are you feeling about that, Tessie? Well, I'm a little nervous for my first audition, but my aunt told the promise to prepare me so I can have all the confidence I need. Have some fun doing some pretend auditions in front of dolls, pets, stuffed animals, other people in the family. The more times you pretend to audition and have fun with it, the less nervous your young person is likely to be when the real audition comes. That does sound fun doing a pretend audition. It does. So the auditioners are keeping track of a lot of things while they're holding the auditions. The only way they can fill the parts for their play is by casting someone from the auditionees. They need you as much as you want the part. So what's my job? The auditionees part of the partnership is to do their very best to be natural and show whatever talents they have without trying to just mimic or imitate what they think the auditioners are looking for. In episode two, we talked about how important memorization is to the live theater process. If you can memorize what you have to do for the auditions, that's definitely going to impress the auditioners. I get now, partner. So, Tessie, after seeing your first live theater performance, do you think you would want to play a lead or do you think you would prefer to be in the chorus? I would like to be in the lead. And why is that? You know, it is a lot of work to be a lead. I know it's more work, but it seems like it would be more fun. Although, the chorus did have the best dancing parts. That's very true. For now, those are five things you can do to help your young person have a very good audition experience. I'm ready. Ta-ta from Tessie. See you next time on Plays and Days 5 Things. Thank you.